Hey everybody and welcome to our latest episode of Saturday Morning Serial. Good morning! And it looks like we've got uh, Heather and Brandon are in with us this morning. Hey! Hey! Glad to see you guys. I hope you've all survived the week and uh, you know we were <laughs> off last weekend because it was Easter and we weren't really doing anything you know special. I, I'm hoping that uh, Everybody that's out there in streaming land uh, had a good, you know, holiday weekend. I know there's Easter and Passover and Ramadan all happening at the same time. Uh, you know, Vicky and I are unwashed heathens, so we just took the weekend off and kind of tried to catch up on some stuff that we were behind on, which was good. So, um, hope everybody enjoyed their time off, spent time family, and and did cool stuff. Um, but this week we were back to it, so we're back in the studio here. We're uh, literally we're in the studio. <laughs> so Vicky's over there painting. She's getting uh, stuff on Major Tom wrapped up, and uh, still, yeah, yay. So she's still working on that, and uh, had some problems with the base with the paint flaking off of that. So I had to clean that off and simple green and wash it and stuff and reprimer and everything. So, um, but yeah, we we got a lot of stuff done this week. Uh, so we'll be boy did talking. we ever yeah yep um, got a bunch of packages and stuff sent out I'll show you guys we'll we'll talk about that here in a little bit but uh, ooh, uh, starting off on the show the first thing that I wanted to tell you guys about was that we have a offer that we're still running in the web store it's going to be good until the end of the month and it's our spring cleaning 20% off offer so if you want to get anything in the web store uh, it's 20% off if you use this coupon code now, this particular coupon code, you have to put that in in the, the checkout. Like when you go through checkout, you put your stuff in the web store in the shopping cart, and you go through the checkout, and then you put this little code in, SPRNG, all in caps, 2022, and they give you 20% off the stuff in your shopping cart. So we're going to run that until the end of the month, and then Vicky's cooking up some ideas for some stuff that we're going to do in May. So um, we're still kind of... Am I? I mean, oh, I am, yes. Oh. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm not sure what that's going to be yet. Mm -hmm. um, People like the Velociraptor offer. Yeah, we got a lot of got a lot of takers on the Velociraptors. So uh, so that was good. We're very happy. Um, hey, James has jumped in. Hey, hey James. James. Uh, hey, you're not you're not running late, man. We're still we're still getting started here. Um, yeah. The let's see, I'm missing. Why is that not showing up? Let's look at this. Uh, hey, let me add a thing here real quick. Do we have to be quiet? No, whoops, that's not what I wanted at all. Uh-oh. Oh. There we go. Okay, <laughs> for some reason this screen was missing the Saturday morning serial title, so we just wanted to make sure everybody that's watching is is uh, is in on Saturday morning serial. So, uh, and, and speaking of that, uh, I, I hope you guys are having your coffee and your cereal and stuff this morning to kind of get started. Uh, I had the uh, I want some hash browns. Well, we're doing hash browns tomorrow, aren't we? Oh, okay. Well, I mean, right? Because tomorrow, okay. Uh, so, through the weekdays, uh, <laughs> we usually, Vicky doesn't normally eat breakfast type stuff, um, but I usually like to kind of get started with at least something, and so, you know, like like today would be cereal, you know. But um, but I had I had some granola and yogurt, you know, a, as the thing, so I guess that counts as cereal. Yogurt, right, and some almonds and stuff. That I would count, I would count that as cereal, it's a cereal thing. Uh, but put that in a little bit of yogurt, the, that Greek, that I like that heavy Greek yogurt stuff. Um, so, uh, but usually during the weekdays, we just, you know, have, you know, that or toast or something, whatever. Um, but uh, on the weekends, we were used to, on Saturday mornings, we used to do like what we call special breakfast. And special breakfast is like, you know, full, you know, fry up thing. Eggs, um, sausage or bacon or, you know, and then some kind biscuits. of biscuits. Vicky makes biscuits from scratch. like Or waffles. Yeah, yeah, and we got a little waffle maker, so sometimes we'll have waffles or something like that. So we'll pick a day on the weekend to have, like, special breakfast, and it makes it kind of a weekend kind of deal. It's, it's kind of fun for us. So we also got the cats into that because the cats will have special breakfast, too, so I'll put a little bit of wet food or whatever down for them. so that They, they like have, it. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah, oh yeah, and they, and while we're cooking, they'll like you know g- clamor around. It's like, oh, we know we're gonna get special breakfast. Yeah, because they know when they smell bacon or sausage, they're like, oh, we're going to get special breakfast. Yeah, yeah. Anything. Yeah, well, even when you just start the coffee. Yeah, that's you know, true. So it's like, we'll put coffee on, you know, to have that with the special breakfast stuff, too. Ooh, and yeah, man, coffee. And they're like, oh, we know what's coming. So anyway. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's the weekend type of stuff for us, you know, because otherwise, it's like being here all the time. It's like, I have no idea what day of the week it is. I don't ever know. So uh, this is... So having the show is kind of good because it, it's sort of like, hey, it's something to look forward to on the weekend. We get to chat with you guys and jump in and, and talk about hobby stuff and do all of that kind of thing and kind of catch up on what we've been doing all the week. So um, uh, so the one thing I, I do want to <laughs> give you guys an update on is, uh, and some of you were asking about this, was, what is going on with that? What? What's wrong? Oh, uh, that's not what I wanted at all. My screen keeps going to sleep real fast. It must be tired. Hey, I think I've messed up my display. Uh-oh. We don't want that. No. We don't want the display messed up. Right. Okay, so... Okay. Here we go. Say it went. That's it. Quit doing that. <laughs> okay, I guess we'll just have to. I'll have to update that later. I'm not sure why it's not not showing it correctly. But anyway, uh, but but it, back to back to the back to the news. Back to the news. Um, we got an update for you on Lilu. Okay, little Lilu has been with us now f- uh, as of yesterday, right? Eight, eight weeks. Eight weeks. Right. Yep. Now, how old was, when we took her to the thing, they were saying that she was... I don't know. I, I'm guessing she's like somewhere between... I was talking to my friend from college about this yes, last night. I think she's between, at this point, she's like 14 to 16 weeks old, mm-hmm. I think. Okay. I don't know. But she has easily doubled in size from when we got her, when we or when she found us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. And so here she is with her favorite little toy, this this little stuffed mouse thing that she likes to chase around. And she's really good about playing by herself and stuff. Because the like the other cat, Shastan will play with her a little bit. You know, they'll run through the house and stuff. But, but he's 11 and he gets tired and then she keeps on and he's like, leave me alone. I don't want to do that no more. Right. But, <laughs> but the, the terrier is still fussing at him and everything. Or fussing at her, you know. So they, they've yeah. still got some stuff to work out. But... Uh, but anyway, so yeah, so she's been doing good, and uh, we had one more vet uh, visit with her this week to get her final booster round, and then um, then she'll be all set until later this summer when we'll take her and you know do the big thing, the spay, get her, yeah, get her spayed. So. Yeah, because uh, we want to be responsible with her, and uh, even though she's an inside cat, and you know keeping her indoors and everything, and all of her other cats are spayed and neutered and so forth, it's like well, we just want to make sure that you know she's. Uh, taken care of like that um so anyway so that's that's what we got going on and uh so vicky has bundled up and packaged up a whole bunch of other uh packages that went out on the scout ship kickstarter this week so we got a bunch of that stuff done yep um let's see and uh, i should have another batch to send off by the end of next week yeah so what we're, what we're doing now is we're casting uh or I've been casting because he's been demolding and cleaning parts and stuff. Uh, so we've been getting all the next batch of stuff ready. So the stuff that we sent out last, in this uh, picture here, the last batch of stuff that we sent out had the Gent bots in it. Okay, so the Gent bots were uh, the last uh, stretch goal item that we had, or not, I mean the add-on item that we had on the Kickstarter. So, uh, so that bundled like all of the initial orders that we got that had the bots in it that's what was in those packages and so now we've cast up a bunch more ship kits and stretch goal items and add-ons and stuff to go with the Alati drives and the sweep wing I mean the um, the tail gunner section so all of that stuff will be going out in the next batch so we've been casting through that stuff this week and we got um, we got 12 more kits 
put together, and uh, Vicky's mom came out yesterday yeah. and packaged up uh, the parts. So, like, all of the hatches and the uh, ladders and deck pieces and, what you know, all the little in inside pieces and so forth, the consoles and things. And she's great because she, like, double and trickle triple checks everything <laughs> yeah right yeah, it's another set of eyes to you know kind of qc stuff and you know we can make sure everything's correct and and all that so yeah so we appreciate her coming out and helping out with that for sure uh so let's see you you had you had taken those to the post office and dropped them off mm -hmm. and so we got those going so uh i've got a few other things to cast up and then uh Vicky will be putting those other that other round of sh ship kits together, and those will be going out next. So yep. we're hoping like next weekend we'll get another round of those out. And that's it. Okay, that's that. All of the orders that we've gotten in for the Kickstarter so far on the Pledge Manager is going to be. Uh, that's all of the the items that we had done that were unlocked stretch goals and add-on items and so forth, except for the War Rocket. The War Rocket. Okay, so the War Rocket is the next thing. And over the last few episodes, we've been talking about the War Rocket, and I've kind of shown you guys some stuff on that. And um, it's there, there's there's still some digital engineering that has to be done. So, like the whole front section, the the bridge part, the I, I need to print out the the clear sections for the windows, the deck, the um, uh, the hull section of the, the cockpit area. Now, the middle section that's got the row of windows on it, that's the passenger hull module. It's exactly the same passenger hull module because it's all modular uh, that, it, you know, we had been sending out, so we already have those molds. And there's going to be a few parts that I'm going to need to make in order to um, do the rest of the, you know, the, the other sections of the kit. So we'll get started on those. And uh, once I can get in and do some, some of the engineering on it, I just want to make sure that those modular pieces fit with the existing modular pieces that we've already printed and, and cast and so forth. So that's going to be next. Once I get all that stuff checked, we'll start printing that out. And uh, I'll start posting updates and stuff on there uh, on the Kickstarter project. And you guys will see some pictures and stuff here, you know, once we get that um, printed. You know, I'll show you guys the prints and, and uh, you know, some of the, the things as we get those done. So anyway, so that's the next thing. So we're, we're kind of down to that. And I, I again, like and I that's, said... And that's <laughs> it. That's the last... Yeah, that's going to be the, yeah. the rest of it. So so we'll cast through that. That's going to be like another 20-something kits that we're going to run through. We're going to do it in two batches of 12, you know, and then we'll have, you know, a few extras. And then everything that's going to be in the, the web store after that will be kind of a cast-to-order type of thing, you know. Uh, so you, you we'll put all of the, the regular core ship stuff and the modules and things in the web store you guys can buy those if you've missed out on the kickstarter project or you weren't able to back it or you know for whatever reason uh but those are going to be in there and um we'll be sure and and uh put all of the little scattered terrain and all of that stuff in there too so you guys can get extras of that stuff i think uh, people are really going to like that galley that galley rec set and the fuel cargo well the yeah and the fuel set and the cargo stuff because mm -hmm. those are all fun mm -hmm. that all all the i really like the re retro soda machine right right yeah that's, that, that i think that's little, my favorite the little tv and stuff yeah the uh -huh. tv's cool too yeah um and i don't i don't have any pictures set up for the slideshow to show you guys that but i mean you can go over and look at the kickstarter project if you want to you want to see some of those pictures and everything but those are going to be in the web store we'll put all that stuff in there and and we'll be taking that stuff to you know ReaperCon and stuff later this year too so yeah i'm looking forward to having that out um uh i guess we'll jump into hobby stuff I'm, i, I kind of want to talk a little bit this morning uh, about spray sealer um have you guys you know i know you popped into the chat and everything um what do you guys use to seal your miniatures? My favorite thing in the world to spray miniatures with is Tester's Dull Coat. And I've been using that for oh, 20, well, it's, it's actually been longer, 25 years more. You know, I mean, I was, I was spraying that onto like model kits before I was painting miniatures, you know, back in the day. So, um, 
yeah, Heather says that's that's what she's been using too. So yeah, testers. Yeah, it's good. It's a good product. Yeah. So. And and James says he's been using that too. Yeah. Um, it's it's great now because of the pandemic uh, and the supply chain shortages and all that stuff. Um, Tester cell coat was pretty hard to get there for a while, and I know that Rust Oleum had bought the Tester's paint line, and I, I had heard this is an internet rumor, is because I haven't been able to confirm it, but they said that they had canceled the Tester's Model Master line, and I don't know if that's a thing. I don't know if you guys had heard about that. Um, so, uh, it it was kind of weird for me that it it, it was like. Okay, uh, there for a while you couldn't get it. So I was trying to find, well, what can I use instead of that? And so I, I bought some stuff and tried it. Uh, Brandon says that he uses an airbrush sealer. Oh, uh, wow. So uh, what what kind of a... Because the, the acrylic sealer that I've got that I used to use for brush on is the Liquitex Clear Matte Medium. Uh, and yeah, I know you can put that through an airbrush, kind of thin it a little bit, and that kind of thing. Uh, hard use, let's see, space with Krylon clear first and then build coat. And then hey. build coat, yeah. Okay, that's a cool idea. That is a good idea. Well, Because okay. then it's not glossy. That's yeah, cool. e exactly. So, okay, so my, my other favorite thing to use is Krylon's matte finish. Okay, and this I got uh, from, you know, Amazon. And I think it's like 11 bucks a can now. Uh, but I, there's, if you can find some, sometimes they'll list it on there for like six or seven bucks. And that's not bad for a can this size because it's like this little can of Dull Coat is, <laughs> like, is like, you know, seven bucks also. Um, and here's what I found. I did a test. Yeah, you're saying it's still a little bit glossy? Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Well, here, here's the thing. Okay, so so I heard that that uh, Rustoleum, you know, had bought the tester stuff, and uh, and so I was thinking, oh, well then their matte sealer should be like the same as Dull Coat, right? Because it's like, well, you're gonna match, you know, manufacture the same stuff and put it in a can. Uh, well, that's not the case because I bought I, I I bought the Krylon matte finish, which is code 1311, you know, just to make sure. And then I bought a can of the, the Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Sealer, okay? And I, I took some extra, you know, like off-cast miniatures or whatever and, and sprayed each one of them with that to kind of see how it was. And the Rust-Oleum stuff, okay, like Heather was talking about, the Rust-Oleum stuff was still, it was kind of a satin color. It wasn't nearly as matte or flat uh, as, um, as the Krylon and the tester's dull coat. So I thought, okay, and, and of course, the Krylon was a little bit more expensive than the Rust-Oleum stuff was. And it's like, well, of course that's gonna be the case because it's like the one that I wanna use is gonna be the more expensive one. Well, sure. You know, every time. So um, so I thought, okay, well then I'll, I'll just, I'll switch to that. So I don't, I think I used that, the rest of that Rust-Oleum can on something else or whatever but I don't I, did, I didn't get any more of that but I've been getting the, the Krylon stuff and it's been pretty much equivalent to the tester's dull cup that I've noticed so I mean as far as as my uh, experience in spraying it has gone um, and so what we'll do is like when we do 3d printing um, I'll take those after we clean the prints clean the supports off of them and and get them all you know uh, sanded down and stuff then I'll spray those parts with the Krylon stuff um, because it'll kind of seal the part so that when we put it in the silicon, it'll, it won't cause a, a chemical reaction with the silicon because sometimes the silicon will react with the 3D prints and not cure. So there'll be like in the recesses like panel lines and little crevices and things. Goo. It'll be gooey silicon stuff and it won't mold right. So then now that has to, everything has to be redone. And that's so, bad. Right. Um, let's see, Heather says she might have a little bit of the Krylon stuff. Well, I, I, if you got it, yeah, you know, that's great. I, I recommend, you know, trying it out. I, you know, don't spray it like I, something you've spent, you know, 40 hours painting. But, um, but yeah, it, you know, for tabletop stuff, it's like I love, you know, sealing 
you know, mat uh, sealer on those to kind of protect them. And I know back when we used to paint, uh, we used to paint stuff for eBay. Like we paint models and stuff. And I usually do two, two coats of that. You know, you can spray it once and let it dry overnight and then, you know, spray it again the next day. And it works pretty well. I'm kind of interested in hearing about the AK mat sealer because Brandon had posted that, that this is what, uh, that he runs through his airbrush. And this is, uh, so I guess I'm not familiar with that, uh, but I, I'd certainly be interested in, in finding out a little bit more about that. Uh, particularly since it's an airbrush thing. And, uh, you know, since we've been using the um, Style and Res Primer from Badger, I, I really like how that covers. It gives a really nice, tight, thin layer of primer that, that sticks to the model really well. And so, you know, if you can find a matte sealer that does, a, you know, a similar thing, then uh, you're going to get really good protection on that at the same time you know, as it's, it's, uh, uh, it's not going to, you know, build up like a thick layer or something. So, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in, you know, giving that a shot, giving it a try. So let's see how that goes. But, uh, uh, oh, the other thing about it is that I wanted to talk about was, and uh, we were talking about 3D printing. And it's like, is this stuff, oops, let me show it right here. Okay. I'm going to hit the microphone with it. Uh, this right here is the Krylon UV resistant clear. Okay, so we've had um, had some people talking about, hey, I want to I want to print your little uh, bubble domes or you know that type of stuff in a clear resin um, for like the STL files. Okay, now I I have tested this. Now we. Um, we printed, I printed some windshields, or was it windshield? No, it was, it was a little flight stands. The little flight stands, I did a test on this. I printed some clear flight stands, and then I shot them with this stuff. And the cool thing about this is, is that once you kind of, uh, you know, cure the resin, it's, um, it doesn't, doesn't look as shiny. It doesn't look as glassy, right? Because of the, the 3D print. Uh, but you gotta sand it down a little bit. And if you shoot it with this, it will come out um, uh, w with a shiny surface to it, so it'll it'll it'll, uh, it'll make it smooth because it's a gloss coat, right? So it'll kind of smooth it out, and it's got a UV protection on it. So like I've seen some complaints from like some people that have printed clear resin uh, on the 3D prints. It's like well, after a while. It kind of turns yellow and it gets a little cloudy and all of this type of stuff. Well, this Krylon UV resistant stuff will keep it from doing that because it'll protect the UV light from uh, continuing to cure that that resin and and you know getting into it, and making it cloudy and everything. So if you guys are going to be printing out bubble domes or you know any of that type of stuff or any other clear thing, I recommend using this Krylon. Uh, UV resistant clear and uh, this one's gloss uh, specifically for doing like windows and canopies and all of that type of thing so uh, anyway I just I wanted to mention that to you and give that a try oh somebody uh, uh, Brandon posted his link to the, yeah. the AK yeah. uh, map sealer okay well cool Thanks, I, I appreciate that link and I'll I will look that up and uh, and definitely check it out so as a matter of fact, I'll, I'll copy that now and put that over in my in my thing, so I can look at it later. Um, all right. Let's see what what else were we were we talking about this week? Go back to the thing. <laughs> right. So, uh, we've been doing some other stuff. I, I actually got to do a little bit of sculpting this week. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I know that... I know that uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I had showed you guys the first iterations of Rosarl. And... Um, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys a couple of little previews here that I I had. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, this was a little clip that I did that uh, while I was sculpting on him. And you can see over here, I've got, uh, <laughs> oh, there's a big object. Anyway, so I've, I've got the original sculpt here, okay? And um, this is me recording the screen of actually working on this guy. I'm gonna kind of scrub through this a little bit. There's, you know, maybe a pad. And what I'm gonna do is, is I'll, edit all of this stuff together as in a um, time lapse so you can kind of see me sculpting on it and uh, here I've got some pre-made pouches and stuff and putting all that stuff together but uh, I'll probably do some voiceover and explain you know why I'm doing the stuff that I'm doing so you guys can kind of watch along on that if you're interested in kind of seeing what the workflow is on putting this guy together so but there he is um, that was where I had gotten to on this. And so I did get to sculpt a little bit more on it this week. Uh, Vicky took a look at this and we kind of um, revised his proportions a little bit and kind of beefed him up, you know, changed some stuff to kind of make him a little bit more similar to the original sculpt. And so this is the point that I got into this week. So I've, I've got the proportions adjusted and all of that kind of thing. And then I put him into, I blocked out the initial pose. Okay, so at this point, it's not finished, but I've got him kind of, it's, the, it's got the um, gesture of kind of what, where I wanted to go with. So, let's see if, if I can actually get him to turn around, yeah. So it was cool because I was able to, to look at, I had a casting of the original model and so I was able to get, get kind of an idea of what the back of his vest looked like and that kind of thing. So, um, Vicky's got her, her paint mixer running. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> do, do your painting. Uh, These bottles have been sitting here a long time. <laughs> right. So, anyway, th so this is a first look at this guy uh, that's in progress right now. So, so. Ooh. I didn't know he posed him. Woo yeah. yeah, so this is this is a, the um this is the initial pose. Okay, and, and I, I got this idea, okay, so I found I found some uh some Wayne Reynolds art, okay, and I, I flipped it around because uh, I kinda wanted him going the other way because I liked in his you know, in this hand he has like his his axe thing, whatever that is, okay. And so I thought, okay, well, I want Urzarl to have his sword, you know, in that hand. And um, so I, I flipped the image around. And I thought, well, I want, you know, to do a similar. It's not exactly the same pose, but it's something that's kind of like it. It's got that kind of feel to it. So, um, so anyway, so at this point, uh, now that I've got it blocked out, I, I'll go back and, like, i got to sculpt his mane and give him, you know, uh, do some... Uh, <laughs> What for Florida well, and stuff? Well, uh, Brandon's getting ready for Savage Worlds, man. <laughs> He's already like brawny plus size one plus one <laughs> and toughness plus one. <laughs> so he, yeah. He's already got his stats working. Now. He's already working out his stats for Savage. <laughs> and I think Heather's like, oh, well, thanks, Heather. She says she likes it. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, he's, he's pretty looking pretty neat. Well, cool. Well, that, I, I appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, so at this point, I'll go back and, and add some details. I want to put some braids and stuff in his mane and, you know, and some other details and things like that. I added this little cool Shrenar necklace type of thing to him. Uh, Ooh, I didn't see that. I was just so bad. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see. haven't seen that. Yeah. So I, I added, and this, you know, give you some details and some paint. So, uh, and the the pose, I'll probably want to have him to separate this at the wrist, here and here, and we'll just put those off to the side. On a sprue. On a little sprue, yeah, yeah. yeah. But okay. uh, in order to, to accommodate the pose. And maybe his tail. Well, no, actually, I... I or I is his tail going to actually be part of him? 
Yeah, his, his tail, uh, it'll it'll probably come around this way. Oh, and, and yeah, out. so it can kind of be attached to the leg. Yeah, right, right so yeah. it'll just hug, you know, up in oh. here, and, you know, that'll be fine. But um, but he's got this Niran. Yeah, um, he's got a Jakara. Right, yeah. And then it looks like he's got a, well, it looks like he's got a Jakara and a particle beam pistol. Yeah, he's got a particle beam pistol. So I armed him the same way that the original sculpt yeah. is done. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I was pretty pretty happy with, you know, and I kind of went through a few iterations about, like, well, where do I want to put the arms and, you know, this kind of thing. So I think this is this is probably the best the best pose for him, you know, so far. Well, so, I mean, at, at this looking stage. really neat. I like that. Well, thanks. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to, to going and, and finishing up the details and stuff on his, you know, costuming and and fur and all of that kind of thing and we'll and I'll show you guys some more pictures of him next week. Do you have a, did you already show him the scale to like a human size figure? Did, I, did he have bright did you show him? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so oh so they can kinda of get a sense of the size of the miniature. Right. Okay. Yeah. So there there he is next to Bragg. So I mean he's a he's a beefy guy. He's a I mean there's a big fella. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean he's not like Wookie sized or anything, you know, but I mean but, it's He's probably you know. like seven or eight feet tall. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, if like I, seven uh, maybe. If Brad's six feet, you know. Right, so. right. So, um, but yeah, okay, so that's that's where, you know, that's where I've gotten to right now. Uh, I mean, he'd be on the 40, isn't he? That, that is a 40 million. Yeah, he's on a 40, so. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. big. So, um, Okay, and so, you know, I was talking about, well, you know, go through the process of, like, putting them out. So I'll show you guys the, the printing and stuff. Once I get the masters and everything printed, uh, I'll kind of record some video and stuff of that so that I can include it with the behind-the-scenes thing on this particular character. Uh, but um, I was talking with Nick Hanger over at Metal Oak Studios or Metal Oak Castings or whatever this week, and uh, we're talking about putting him out in CO cast thermoplastic. So, uh, to kind of get that a test. Yeah. Uh, that's still in the works. Uh, uh, Nick hasn't got his machine yet, so that's still in progress and everything. So, um, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that that, that works out because I'd like to test that material and see, um, see how he would work in that. Um, yep. But, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. So so hopefully, you know, we'll be able to, to do that. And if that test comes out okay with uh, the CO cast plastic, because like we've got some other stuff, like the, maybe the, the helmet things or, you know, some other stuff. I know that going forward, we're looking at doing some of our other characters in that material. Uh, Vicki and I have also been working on, uh, or at least thinking about, our Savage Worlds Kickstarter project that that's you know kind of working on, we're working on in the background. Um, I know that she's still got some stuff that she's working out for running the sessions that we're going to have at North Texas RPG Con, and I, 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 I'm planning on you know um, well I'm hoping that we can take some pictures of that. I, I'll probably be running the booth while you're running the game. So, yeah, um, I'll have to take some snapshots while we're playing. Yeah. Yeah, so we can get you guys an update on on how the game session goes and, and all that. But yeah. as far as looking at at the Kickstarter, there were there were eight there were eight iconic characters that we wanted to do. I know there's like pairs of Illyrians, Al Alandi, and yeah, we were looking at doing a male female PC for the Alani, Shrenar, Illyrian, and. Uh, humans or Niren or what? What were we gonna do? Well, uh, yeah, humans and stuff because it, we're, I I was thinking that the Niren that's not necessarily a player character race. Well, it is, it is. Um, you can play a Niren exile. Oh, exile. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that yeah, those would probably come out a little bit later. But, and so uh, there's PCs. Um, there's PC stuff that I'm working on for that too. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know if the the first set of miniatures, I think they're all going to be the small, because the Niren are, are big. I mean, they're real big. So, right. Um, right. So, it may just be the human, Illyrian, Trenar, and Alani. Yeah. 
male female versions of each one so yeah um yeah, yeah so, so so we're looking at doing that um but then the other the, the uh um yeah it, yeah, yeah it's, it's going to be like a set because we're going to do those eight yeah. characters okay and you get the little set on the kickstarter and then uh then we'll probably put them out either in in little packs or um or so forth afterwards, you know, in the web store. But being able to run them in the thermoplastic uh, will allow us to have a, a kind of a flexible, open-ended production on them where we don't know how many people are going to back the Kickstarter and we don't know how many we're going to have to produce. And it's probably going to be more than we can handle in a timely fashion here because molding and casting is still a bottleneck for us uh, just because of the the process that you have to go through in order to uh, make the molds and cast the figures and so forth, which it's like, well, it's just us doing it. So it's like, I've got to, you know, cast the things and then Vicky's got to take them out of the molds and, and clean them and all that. So, um, so right now we're looking at that as an alternative uh, because if, if we've got to produce, you know, hundreds of figures for that, uh, the yeah. thermoplastic. Eight figures and hundreds is like, oh. Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> That's going to be a lot. So we want to make sure that we've got a, a good production pipeline set up. Uh, and the thing about, you know, it's like, well, you could run them in metal. It's like we've run miniatures in metal before and, and all that. And yeah. Well, the thing about that is, is that the, the production price of metal is starting to become prohibitive. And that's why, like, a lot of the miniatures companies that you're seeing now are kind of switching to this thermoplastic stuff because there's a... Uh, um, it, it's a, there's a cost factor to it that's more appealing than uh, with what metal production is right now. So, uh, so we're looking into that, and uh, we're kind of looking at our options to see. There's a lot of there's a lot of folks here in the U.S. now that have those new SiaCast machines from Spain that are are running these the thermoplastics. I know F and Cool ran a Kickstarter. They've got one, and uh, I think there's one over at Reaper. Yeah, yeah, Reaper's got one because they're they're calling that their Bones USA stuff. So all the stuff that's made in Bones USA in the kind of the gray plastic and stuff, that's the CO-cast thermoplastic. So, uh, so they're running that. Um, and uh, there's a couple of others. I know Galadoria Games just ran a kick. They're either, their Kickstarter just wrapped up or they're still working on it, but they're doing like this cool uh, castle scenery and stuff for like siege. They've got like elves and dwarves and humans and stuff, all different kinds of uh, like camp tents and all of this type of stuff, and they're they're running all of that in the sea of cast iron plastic. So, so it's uh, it looks really cool. We got some samples of it, and the the detail is is really high, and uh, there's just a lot of advantages to it. It's um, it's uh, eco friendly. It's not there's not any toxic you know materials to it. Even the the silicon molds and stuff. Uh, there's no off gassing. And they can, it's it's uh, not exactly like metal. It doesn't, I don't know if it melts back down, but they can it chop it up yeah. and then redo it yeah, and you can recycle reuse it. it. Yeah, so, so, like, so like, like all of the sprues, all of the, the stuff that we're like cutting off and having to throw away now in, in the, like the two-part resin, the CO-cast thermoplastic is like, well, you can cut those sprues off and put them in the mulcher. It's mulch, it's a... Uh, Whatever it is, it's like a uh, like a shredder type of thing. It grinds it up. It grinds it up into little pellets, and you can put those pellets back in the hopper and and melt them down again. So there's there's much less waste on it than yeah. traditional resin casting. I like that. that. It's yeah. a lot more yeah. uh, earth friendly. Yeah, I like that too. It's uh, uh, so that's one of the reasons why we're looking at kind of shifting to that. Uh, and then the other thing is like the infinity stuff over at Corvus Belly, they're like big into moving their stuff in that direction too. So, uh, you know, for the same reasons. And then and they touted it as like, well, hey, uh, you know, it's like, well, if it's cheaper processes, it's like, well, are, are the miniatures going to be cheaper? And they were like, no, but they're just, not, they're not going to get, they're, you know, the prices aren't going to go up. That's the thing. So they'll be able to maintain their current pricing, you know, at a longer, you know, further along than, yeah, you know, everybody of else to raise, prices. raise their prices, you know, due to the, to the metal costs. Yeah, and stuff. that'd be good. Yeah. So there's a bunch of people talking about this. There's a lot of buzz on it, you know, with the different, 
different chats and things, you know, out on the inner tubes, the interwebs and so forth. So you, you can look up some of that stuff. Uh, CUCast actually has a YouTube channel you can go and look at, and they show you examples of their uh, casting process and, um, you know, what's involved with making the molds. The molds are very similar to, like, the Vulcan molds that you would have on, like, a regular metal spin caster, but they don't spin. They just they sit in a little plate, plate thing and... It presses them down and then it injects the plastic and you know from the top of it. So, uh, so it's kind of a combination of like it's 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 great because it takes all of the the advantages of resin casting, metal casting, and uh, uh, well, yeah, and those two methods and kind of combines them, you know, with the best properties and kind of minimizes all of the the bad stuff that you get with either one of those. So it's. Uh, it's a really advantageous process to making miniatures. So yeah, we're, we're looking forward to checking that out. Uh, anyway, I, I didn't really want to get into you know a bunch of that type of stuff, but uh, um, so we were talking about what Kickstarter, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you've we're getting pretty close to. Aside from the miniatures, that's all we were talking about was uh, looking at pricing for like some of the other things, the bennies and that type of stuff. So we're kind of looking at what kind of benny designs we want to oh, we have. Oh, yeah, that's really hard because they have so many cool things. Mm -hmm. But they're like, uh, I think they have like unique chips made or whatever for their bennies. Yeah, but man, there it's it's really pricey to try to do some of that stuff. So we're trying to look at you know different things that are possible and what's you know. Uh, well, we we found I, I found a few places that would print uh, poker chips and stuff, but yeah, I, I haven't been really you know super happy with the the style of the chips that they offered so um yeah we're trying to come up with some various ideas that are in keeping with the retro flavor and you know kind of help foster that uh design aesthetic so right i don't know that would be distinctly counter -blasting. yeah you know, you know, so we really want to do I, I don't know if we'll have this like for in store but we're definitely looking at doing the lunchbox thing for the Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah. Um, there, there's going to be a lunchbox starter set for the Kickstarter project. So, and it'll have the. Is it going to have the miniatures in it, right? It's what yeah, it'll yeah. it'll like come with a little. And I I really would like to look at doing a like a digest version of the quick rules or something like that. You yep. know, because mm -hmm. we'll put out a book that. I don't think we can get the book to be sized exactly the size that Savage Worlds puts their books out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, because yeah. Because of the, the... Well, yeah, the Savage Worlds books are, are printed over in China at a particular printer. And, um, oh. and we're going to be going through Lightning... Well, it's uh, Ingram Spark now. And that's, um, that's who a lot of the other third-party publishers print their stuff from the it's a print-on-demand company it's where we printed our counterblast second edition yeah the 2.0 but right uh but they do have a comparable size you know it's it's close it's about a, a quarter inch difference or half inch you know than yeah. the savage worlds so it's close so it's you know it'll be close enough yeah so we'll have that but i also wanted to look at doing a little digest quick rules version or something mm -hmm. that goes in the in the uh, lunchbox, lunchbox yeah. that uh and, and like you get the set of the eight miniatures and you know maybe there's some other things too i don't know yeah we'll have to look and see but i'd really like to do something like that for that yeah so, so, so we're, we're still looking, looking at, at what those items are. We also looked at the other thing that you that you need during a Savage World sessions to play is well, one is the Benny. So we're kind of looking at what we want to do for creating cool Benny things. Uh, the other thing is the initiative cards. 
So yeah. we've also looked at just having custom playing cards made and like a little deck so we could have, you know, unique counterblast art on them and then it would, be, you know, have the little suit uh, uh, icons and stuff on there so you could use those as initiative cards, but it would have unique counterblast, you know, themed art and stuff on it. So we're kind of looking at that too as part of the package. Um, and then, um, yeah, so, we're, well... We're going to do the lunchbox, the cards, the minis, the miniatures, you know, and the book and stuff. So to launch it, I, I think we've got a pretty good cross-reference of like, here's, you know, how to jump into Counter Blast as a role-playing game. Um, and you've gotten pretty much most of the rules done at this point. Yeah, there's a few things I'm still tweaking and working on, but it's, it's pretty... It's pretty far along. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, starting to compile some stuff for the. I kind of had to shift gears and I'm compiling stuff for the um, demo games for the beta testing. Mm -hmm. And so I'm generating the. I'm going to generate uh, hopefully eight characters. You know, eight PCs, and it'll probably be kind of like the what the player characters uh, models would be. It's going to be. Um, you know, Alani, Illyrian, Trenar, and Human. Mm -hmm. um, and let's see. Uh, and I'm trying to make sure that each character includes some kind of uh, unique counterblast setting, um, edge, or, you know, uh, well, of course, like, we're going to be playtesting, like, the... Um, species, you know, because that's all generated based on the Savage World Core Rules Guide. And so we'll play test that and see how balanced that stuff turns out. It's like, maybe like, man, these guys are really powerful. I mean, they can do all kinds of stuff. But, um, but they're balanced based on the rules that they uh, have. And I had posted some of this on, uh, like, last year on the Savage Worlds official yeah. Facebook page. Yep. And some people, you know, I got a lot of um, real useful, uh, you know, um, feedback. feedback on yeah. it. And um, one guy was like, well, hey, I, this comes out, you know, where it's... Uh, zero and you're supposed to be plus two because um, all the characters are plus two because like humans are usually I mean y'all probably know uh, like you know in role playing games humans are kind of used as the baseline and and then everything else is like it's, you, it's built off of that, built off of that. Yeah. so um, in Savage Worlds I don't know how many of y'all are familiar with it but um, well I know Brandon so. Yeah, I know Brandon knows. So uh, he's like, yeah, yeah, you're talking to the choir here. Yeah. But um, uh, humans are like, they just, they're them and they get an edge. And an edge is worth two points the way uh, Savage Worlds uh, points out their advantages or disadvantages and stuff like that. And, um, hey, back, Brandon. <laughs> Uh, uh, he heard us talking he heard about, talking about it. <laughs> He's like, my ears are burning. Somebody's talking about me. Those people on the chat. Right. <laughs> it's like, um, but anyway, so um, I kind of went back through all those to double check them to make sure they came out the way, you know, where they're all coming out plus two. Because I did... Um, I did find one, I think it was one of the Niren. Mm -hmm. I think it was one of the Niren Exiles had actually come out only plus one, so so I had to give them something else, you know, to, to bump them up to plus two, so. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I, I, I don't know, that kind of stuff really appeals to me, and it's, it's fun coming up with that stuff, but for the demos, I'm trying to, we'll be testing how well those species are balanced, but I'm also giving them, we've got some, well, shoot, if I'd have prepared better, maybe I'd do that for next time. Um, yeah, put, put something um, together and we can... We I'll kind of give y'all, if, if y'all are interested, I'll give y'all a little sneak peek into... Um, some of these uh, Counterblast Savage Worlds edges and some of these 
you know, that are unique to that setting and some of the things that I've come up with for that. And there's um, the, the well, I mean, they... They call it powers, I get you know, because not everything's magic, I guess. But, I mean, the power system, I've kind of got my own, uh, we kind of vamped that, re, uh, revised that for Counterblast in a certain way because um, the way it is in the general book, it's like, well, that's not really, everybody, there's all these different things, and it's like, well, no, there's this thing, and this is how... Everybody accesses it differently, mm -hmm. so um, so there's it's it's a little different in how the approach to powers is, and so we'll be testing that. And there's just a whole bunch of things that hopefully uh, some of these little play test beta sessions will kind of let us see, you know, where we've uh, you know still got work to do on stuff, or like you know, hey, that's over powered or underpowered or it's not very fun or you know it's clunky or whatever but um savage worlds has a really cool system um it's it's real uh to me it's pretty simple i mean it's it's got a complexity but it's not like well, blow it's, blow your mind right well, it's, it's, it's simple to learn but hard to master what, I guess. I, well, I don't know if I'd even say that, but right. it's 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 a very um, uh, user friendly, malleable kind of uh, system. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's kind of easy to see where they're going with it, and it's easy. It, it kind of makes it simple or simpler to kind of modify things, and you know, to achieve the result that you're trying to get, and. So, um, I've really enjoyed, uh, you know, working on it and coming up with this stuff. So, yeah. hopefully, it'll play well and uh, people have fun with it and find some of the new stuff interesting and and uh, we'll see, you yeah. know, and we'll go from there. So Well, some of the edges and the other things that you had put together, uh, you know, also kind of give it a, a distinctly counterblast kind of flavor. Too, well, you know. well, some of it does because, like, okay, there's two approaches I was looking at for because we want to have Moxie in the game, um, <laughs> yeah, you, you know, because that's a very that's a thing. That's it's, a you know, very you know right. back in that time frame, you know. Um, hey, kid, you've got Moxie. <laughs> yeah, you know, you've got Moxie. Right. But um, so at first, you know, one of the things we we're looking at was that Moxie would be. Bennies, mm -hmm. but the more I thought about that, the more I was like, well, you know, that's just really uh, taking uh, something they already have in the game and just, you know, oh, well, we're just going to call it Moxie. And well, then it's that's like, confusing, eh. too, because yeah. then it's like, and, and it's I, like well, people are, you know, it's like, well, don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And it's like, well, people are going to call it Bennies anyway, because that's what they're used to calling it. Mm -hmm. So I started looking at, well, how else could we do it? And um, so uh, what, the thing that I want to play test is uh, Moxie is actually an edge you can take. And it's like a, some of the edges in, um, what are those called in uh, Pathfinder? Um, oh, shoot. <sighs> yeah, right, yeah. It's, it's been a long time since I've looked yeah, at the Yeah, it's been a long time. But uh, but to me, edges are kind of like the... Um, oh, they're sh not like... Feats? Feats, yeah. Yeah, okay. Edges no, yeah. are kind of like feats. They're, kinda, or, yeah. they're, they're a lot like feats in yeah. how they uh, feats work. Feats don't and, fail me now. <laughs> uh, they're kind of... Yeah, they're kinda very much like feats in how you... Because you, you can um, start out picking so many... And you don't you, want to kick your feet, I don't think. Well, no, I'm not talking. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. And um, um, and and like as you uh, uh, in Savage Worlds they call it advancing. You know, as you're leveling up, and mm -hmm. um, and during certain advances, you can get another edge. And um, so some of the edges are just like it's this edge, like 
that's it, you know. But some edges are kind of two-tiered or multi-tiered. So you get the first edge and then, and, and feet work that way too. Some of the feet work that way because you got like, you Well, there's know, prerequisites on some yeah. of the feet where it's like, well, you have to have this feet well, in I order to get this feet to get this feet, right? Right, yeah. right. And edges uh, have, some edges have prerequisites as well. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't know. It's like you, you had, uh, oh, I can wield long swords or I can do this. And it's like, oh, well, I have the improved wielding of long swords or whatever so it's it you know so feats and edges are similar because edges you can multi-tier and like you can get the first feet or what am i i'm calling them the wrong things now the first edge and then you can get the next edge after right. so um it's all the same it's anyway like, oh, whatever yeah. uh <laughs> so moxie is is uh an edge and um and you can have moxie and then uh there's a, another tier to moxie and it gives you different things but um i think i'll it, uh put a little thing about some of these counter blast things uh yeah yeah we can we together can, and and we can kind of let y'all graphics and stuff and yeah. put them on the screen and stuff next time and yeah uh yeah so that's good like hey coming on the next show uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Savage World some more. So, yeah, you know. we'll talk some more about that. Right. But anyway, um, but yeah, it's it's been a lot of fun, and hopefully, um, it will it uh, people have fun at the demo games, and we'll have some of those ready to go in June at North Texas uh, RPG. North Texas RPG. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and we'll also be running some at ReaperCon, mm -hmm. and uh, I don't know if we'll be running any at that um, at the at that show that's in Plano. I don't think I don't know if we'll be running some there or not, but uh, yeah, no, I don't I don't think uh, we're. I think it's just being a vendor there. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. still pending. It's like because uh, what is yeah. it? The Lone Star Open. Uh, yeah, Lone waiting, Star Open. I'm that's still waiting it. to hear back from the Lone Star Open people to see whether we're going to have a vendor space or not. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, but for sure, uh, North Texas RPG and Reapercom will be running some beta test stuff for that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and we already have our rooms booked and our spaces booked for both of those shows. So we're definitely going to be there. Um, Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, part, you know, uh, barring any, barring you know, any global weird, disaster. Yeah, yeah, or stuff. But yeah. anyway, so if y'all are in the area or you're going to be, um, we hope to mm -hmm. have you join us. So yeah. it'll be a lot of fun. That'll, that'll be cool to hang out. Yep. Um, so uh, so you, the rest of you folks out there in streaming land, uh, I'm hoping that you guys, it's Saturday, if you're working on some hobby stuff, I don't know what you guys are doing today. Uh, Vicky and I are probably going to be doing some more casting and stuff like that. But uh, you know, let us know what you're going to be working on, because uh, I know there's there's probably some painting or gluing or you know working or who knows what that's that's going on out there. Yeah. Um, let's see. What if? Well, hopefully, whatever you're up to, you're having fun doing it. Yeah. So. Model prep. Brandon's working on some model prep. So oh, that's awesome. cool. Uh, I've, I have a <laughs> I have an Edo Strider that needs to be put together too. So <gasps> Edo that's, Strider. That's, that's got to happen at some point. And we need to go through our scenery and stuff for the. Yes, stuff, we do. So. Yes, we do. Okay, well, I got to tell y'all about this one thing. I'm not going to. Uh, this gentleman ordered, placed to order this um, earlier this week. And got, okay, I, I kind of fear for whoever he's going to play with because he got three Edo Striders. And it's like, okay, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. War of the Worlds is getting ready to happen somewhere. I don't right. know. On, at least on his tabletop. <laughs> at least on his tabletop. There's, an, there's, like, an, uh -oh. there's an Edo invasion on the way. I mean, it's going to be like, game over, man. Game <laughs> over. <laughs> yeah. Well, Heather says that she's got some touch-up work on a contest model, so Ooh, that's cool. cool. Yeah, I need to get busy on some contest models, Heather. 
<laughs> oh man, yeah. It's I haven't even started on the thing that I wanted to do for ReaperCon this year. Yeah, so, me neither, and I need to. And it's already it's it's May. I mean, I might as well just go ahead and say it's May already because yeah, almost it's, it's going to be May next weekend, yeah. right? Next yeah. weekend. Yeah, a week from tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, oh my gosh, you know. And then, and then, uh, you know, we'll blow through May, and then it's like, okay, the first half of the year is over with. So now it's just like, it's the next quarter will be ReaperCon. I know. I'm trying to get ready for that. It's hard for me to believe we've had Lilu eight weeks. It's like, where did that go? Mm -hmm. Eight weeks? Holy cow. Oh, oh, she says that she's got Kai prepped, but she hasn't started painting her yet. So I'm, oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking I forward to so seeing that. I am so looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Oh, man, I can't wait. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty cool. Are you going to be bringing that to uh, to ReaperCon, or is it is it just for something else? Um, or or Because I don't know what other painting competitions and stuff that are going on out there. I mean, I'm, there may have been... Uh, well, well, let's see what online mess, miniature contests. I know, uh, I know, we do the miniature monthly thing too. So yeah, um, let's see. You've been doing a bunch of table stuff. So oh, that's the plan to bring it to ReaperCon. Yeah. Oh, awesome! Well, great. Yeah, looking forward to seeing that. That will be cool. Yeah. So. But. Uh, well, oh wow! It looks like that we're we're already past our ten o'clock. Are we? Time, yeah. Man, yeah. time flies today. I, I know. Well, we covered. It's kind of like whoosh. Mm -hmm. Covered a lot of different stuff this week, so okay. uh, kind of gave you guys an update, and then we talked about some Savage World stuff, and so you know, next week we'll be we'll be covering some more of that. Let's see. Okay, what did James say? He said, "I'll be still <laughs> prepping the oh." <laughs> Wow, okay. Steel uh, wool. Huh. That's interesting. All right. Okay. I, I wonder if it's like... It, well, I don't know. He said not to ask. So. Yeah, he said don't <laughs> ask, so I'm not going to respect right. his request. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's that's interesting. All mm -hmm. right. So, well, okay. I guess we'll, we're we're going to wrap up here since we've been, you know, yakety yakking for, you know, over an hour. But uh, was there anything else that we needed to cover? I don't know if there was. I can't think. Want to make sure that we've, we've got all of our stuff covered this week that we wanted to talk about. So let's see. It's where all the windows have been drilled. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you're clean. Like you drill and there's a little burr and all this and you kind of yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yep, yep. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. So when you get that done, I'm pretty sure you're going to be posting pictures of that. I hope because I'd like to see that. So, uh, oh, and the other thing that I didn't get to do this week, and I know you guys have probably noticed that, you know, we still have our little chat window, which is cool, and we'll, we're still going to continue to have that on Saturday Morning Serial, but I've still been looking at uh, connecting my Discord server, and I know that the last episode Kathy was talking about, it's easy to hook that up, and I just, I haven't had time to look at it this week, but I'd, I'd like to be able to pipe our discord voice server into the chat so that we can actually chat with you guys you know yeah that'd be and, awesome and do that and then you guys you know can you know we can talk live back and forth i think that would be kind of fun that'd be pretty awesome yeah so i'm gonna i'll look at that and and try to set that up for a future episode i'm not sure how many more episodes we're going to be doing for saturday morning serial for this season i know it's going to take us into the summertime but then once we start hitting the convention stuff, we'll probably hold off on that until it comes up again, you know. And, but but uh, we're also, I'm still working on the, on the workbench show, uh, so we can actually do, you know, it'll probably be a little bit longer format and we'll be building stuff. So we'll, <laughs> we'll keep you guys posted on that. So. <laughs> do you see what Brandon did? Uh -uh. Brandon said, Bronny, size plus one, toughness plus one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where we were talking about the... Yeah, yeah, no, but uh -huh. he did it again. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, wait, no. What happened? Oh, you're just... Uh, my chat bumped back up. Okay, I thought you repeated that. Oh. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought that was funny. Your chat window is doing weird stuff. My there. chat window is doing yeah. some weird stuff. But uh, Okay, well, I guess we're going we're gonna to call it a day here on the streaming. But uh, uh, as usual... 
If you guys missed this episode or you came in late or whatever, it's always going to be over on YouTube. So uh, pop over to Bombshell Minis over on YouTube and hit like and subscribe and do all of that type of stuff. And uh, you can catch up on the show on back issues or back episodes over there. Uh, for some reason, Twitch has decided that it's going to uh, drop those off, you know, over on our Twitch thing after about a, a week or two. So you can get our... Uh, you know, all of our previous episodes video on demand over there. So cool. Well, hey, all right. Well, I guess we'll see you guys later. Bye, Brandon. Thanks for all. Bye, of the, everybody. Bye. We'll, we will see you next time on Saturday Morning Serial.